Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rada Lessons. Welcome back to another video and I hope this video finds you well and I hope you're all staying well and healthy in these tough times. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance that came out some time ago and this one is by Dua Fragrances and it's called Purple Sapphire, so please make sure to stay tuned. So I believe this fragrance was released last year in 2019 and I know I'm usually on the mark uh, when it comes to reviewing new Dua fragrances that they happen to release recently. In the case of this one, this is one that I actually wore last year and it's one that I had a very good experience with and it's one that I've been wearing fairly consistently. And so although I'm very akin to wearing um, and reviewing fragrances by the company that just came out, I was really interested in reviewing something that I know I've been wearing a lot. I'm very familiar with the way that it performs and the way that it unfolds. And just as a disclosure, this product was sent to me for review by the company or by the brand owner slash CEO. His name is Masam Raza. So thank you very much for gifting me this fragrance, sending it to me so that I can review it on my channel. I really do appreciate it. So for those of you who don't know, Dua Fragrances makes their own versions of more popular designer or niche fragrances. And in the case of this one, this is a more popular niche fragrance. So this one is based off of a fragrance by the company Bodicea the Victorious, and that fragrance is called Amethyst. And as you can kind of tell, there is a similarity in the name. This one is called Purple Sapphire. And I would say that from a synesthetic standpoint, it actually does smell a little purple. I know there's violet, there's raspberry, there's peach, there's passion fruit, there's amber, there's Cambodian oud, sandalwood, musk. I mean, it has a ton of ingredients in there, but I do get a lot of those fruity ingredients more strongly, uh, not just in the opening, but also in the mid and the dry down of this fragrance as well. So this is a fragrance that does lean more into fruity territory. It's a little bit on the sweet side and it actually has gotten me a lot of really interesting compliments, which I'm not really in the market for compliments when it comes to wearing my fragrances, but I'm excited to tell you about a couple experiences that I've had, but let's start with the presentation. So the box just has this logo on the front that means Dua or it says Dua. You open it up just like this and you can see this little blurb on the left hand side if you would like to pause your screen and read it. And then the bottle rests in the box on the right hand side here. The side of the box just has the concentration and the back of the box has the size, the concentration, the ingredients and the website. So the front of the bottle here just kind of has this purple colored graphic. It almost looks like a gemstone. And then you have the name of the fragrance written on the side. The cap for this fragrance does click into place very securely. You can pick this one up from the cap and the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. So I suppose I'll start with the story of the compliment that I received or what I would argue is the most memorable compliment that I received wearing this fragrance. And once again, I don't wear fragrances for compliments. I do wear them for myself, obviously. Uh, if, if that weren't the case, I wouldn't be wearing some of these really heavy hitting, obscure, daring, challenging, pushing the envelope sort of fragrances. Uh, but this is one that is very likable, hence the reason why I do find myself getting a lot of compliments when I wear it. So I was actually in Atlantic City and my wife and I were staying at Harris. And we go down to Atlantic City maybe once a month, once every other month. Uh, we're not drinkers or gamblers or anything like that. But from time to time, we do like to get away and just sort of relax and do our own thing and have it be a nice change of atmosphere, uh, pre-quarantine of course. And uh, I was actually wearing this one. We got on the elevator, we just got off the elevator and my wife says, oh, I think I forgot my phone in the room. So she's looking through her bag when all of a sudden the elevator door opens behind us and a group of women come out and they were all really dressed up to the nines. I think it was like a bachelorette party or something like that. And one of them says, they might've been drinking a little bit too, full disclosure. One of them says, oh my God, do you smell that? That smells amazing. And another one of the girls right next to her turns to her and says, yeah, I smell that too. Is somebody wearing perfume? And we were like the only other people in the vicinity. So they kind of turned to us and they said, Are you, is one of you wearing a fragrance? Is one of you wearing perfume? And they actually got in closer to me and they smelled me, which was a little awkward because all of this was happening in front of my wife and my daughter, but they love the way that this smells. And you know, I think given the original, because the original does go for $600, I probably wouldn't find myself wearing that on a casual basis, but this is actually one that I've been wearing on a casual basis, whether it be to work or running errands or going to the supermarket or something like that. But let's talk about the smell. So 
This one does actually kind of remind me of another fragrance by the company Kajal, and it's called Dahab. And I think the similarity lies within the fact that they both contain musk and passion fruit. So they have a similar vibe going on, and that one is a fragrance that I've reviewed with my friend Carlos. I totally love that fragrance, made by perfumer Chris Carbonell. This one, on the other hand, is a bit more fruity, and I don't think it's as musky. So it opens up with this raspberry, sort of strawberry, peach sort of a vibe. I know strawberry is enlisted as a note, but it's very strong on the raspberry. It has a touch of peach in there. It doesn't smell feminine at all because I know I mentioned jasmine and peach. So does it smell like one of those typical traditional fruity floral fragrances that is marketed for women? It opens up very sweet. I really appreciate the way that it smells. And I think it's what contributes to the likability of the smell. So it's very fruity, it's very ripe, it's very luscious, and it also has a seductive quality about it. And I would assume that that's the case with the original as well, which by the way, now I do feel compelled to buy. So I'm fairly confident that I am gonna go out there when funds are a little bit better and I'm gonna purchase the original because I really want it for my collection. It's just an amazing, amazing smell. So if you like those fruity sort of fragrances like Pulp by Byredo, where they're sort of overly ripe and overly fruity, I think you're really gonna enjoy this one. Now, for those people out there who might be a little bit concerned about the mid of the fragrance, I know I mentioned a few floral ingredients, doesn't smell floral to my nose, so you're safe there. And in terms of the Cambodian oud, I do get something that's a little bit woodsy in the base, but it's not overly oudy, it's not funky, it's not animalic, it's not raunchy in any way. I pretty much get a nice balance of the sandalwood and the oud that's in there. And I also get that musky presence in the base, but it's a very clean sort of a musk. The overall composition is just pieced together very, very nicely. I'm very impressed by the way that this one smells. And I actually look forward to wearing this one a lot more since I've already been wearing it in the past. And this is one that seems to me is more suited towards the colder weather, but I've actually been wearing it in every season so far since I acquired it in 2019. And it's just been a very, very pleasant experience for me. And so I hope you guys have a chance to go out there and check it out. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, you want to call a spade a spade and not a spoon, right? Uh, this one is a clone of a more popular niche fragrance called Amethyst by Bodicea the Victorious, and I know that that fragrance retails for $600. So here, I know this is one of the more pricey duo fragrances, uh, which is, I think, $75, if I recall, from the last time that I went on their website. But if you can purchase it whenever they're running a promotion, I think you're going to get a really good deal. Uh, and it also also doubles as a hand sanitizer, right? Because of the concentration of alcohol in there. And that's something that I think we're all sort of on the hunt here for a very expensive hand sanitizer nonetheless, but it's an amazing smell. And the overall smell is really powerful, really pleasant. And I think it's also different from other fragrances that I've tried. And like I said earlier, it is going to, um, it has encouraged me to go out there and purchase the original, which I plan on doing. In terms of the longevity on this one, I do find the longevity to be nuclear. So you're gonna get nine to 10 hours on your skin. The performance is just fantastic. And in terms of the projection on this one as well, it does project quite strongly for the first three hours of application. And it's not until the six to seven hour mark that it starts to become a little bit more subtle. This one, despite the fact that it doesn't contain a lot of citrus, it does last a very long time and it projects rather nicely. And I think that's because of the concentration, but also because of that weight, the weightiness of a lot of the ingredients that are in there. In terms of the versatility for this one, Maybe it's compromised a little bit. I find it to be perfectly unisex. I think it might do a little bit better in the colder weather because of how well it performs. And I also do think that it's one that would be uh, more likely worn and like the fall, the spring, and like a special occasion sort of a fragrance. I think uh, given the price tag for the clone, at least, uh, this is one that I can see myself wearing casually and to work. And to be honest with you guys, I have been wearing this casually and to work, and that's where I get the bulk of the compliments that I receive. And then in terms of the presentation, I think if you've seen one, you've seen them all, but I do like the simplicity of the design on this one. The font is quite legible. So my final verdict on this fragrance is I love this fragrance. This is one of my favorite favorite smells. I'm really happy that I've discovered it. And it's kind of along the same lines of, like I said, this one fragrance by Kajal called Dahab. That one is a really musky, super long lasting passion fruit sort of a scent. 
This one has more of like that ras raspberry sort of strawberry peach overtone, which I really like. So it kind of goes in its own direction, but I really do like those fruity smelling fragrances, uh, especially if they're not overly floral so they don't smell necessarily feminine or anything like that. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Purple Sapphire by Duo Fragrances. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And of course, I would include fragrance reviews just like this, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. See you next time. Bye.